Let's get started. Uh, people are coming in, but um, just before we start, uh, let me ask a question because I, we haven't had any uh, icebreakers. Who knows what's an Argo CD sync wave? Okay, so for the first time in the first Argo con, we're going to do the sync wave. Everybody will go like from the beginning, from the, from the start, this will be the negative numbers, zero and positive numbers. So at the count of three, we'll do the sync wave. Let's, let's do a practice, like go one, two, and three. Sync wave. Okay, okay. Sync wave, right, sync wave. So let's go. One, two, and three, but stream. No, 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 this is ArgoCon. This is not like another con. One, one, again. One, two, three, go. Sync wave, hashtag. Okay. So with that icebreaker, uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Carlos Santana. I play the guitar for fun. I'm a EKS specialist with AWS, and we, with me is Frank, go ahead. Frank, yes, and I work just for work. <laughs> and uh, I also use EKS, by the way, so <laughs> I'm trying to uh, get more funding for him. <laughs> for NVIDIA. Okay, so let's get started. I'll, I'll go and do an intro, and then uh, I'll come back after Frank gives us a story about NVIDIA and building a platform. So. This morning we heard, um, right before us, we heard the story about internal developer platforms or building internal developer platforms. So I want to introduce you to a project called Canoe, like, like the boat you pronounce it, that's how I pronounce it. Uh, it's the Cloud Native Operation Excellence. This is a, a project that we started, I think it was uh, last year with uh, this, these companies, um, Nike, Adobe, Autodesk, Intuit on building, like, what is the, the concept of internal developer platforms? Uh, what are the best practices? So these companies are, like, getting together to see, like, what are the tools that we should be using to create an internal developer platform? And uh, you're going to see this week, a lot of the talks about internal developer platforms or building platforms is around self-serving capabilities, be able to give developers or data scientists in your organization an ability to have these capabilities in self-serve mode. And these are the capabilities that the project have come up with, and you can check it out in the, in the website. But the idea is that these capabilities are, for the most part, the same ones that um, every company needs, and they will be like stable. They have been there for present for the for a lot amount of time, but in some organizations are not self-serve. So um, in the Canoe project, what we're trying to do is have multiple examples on how to build a stack of tools that the platform team can choose that like we heard in the previous talk about the, the latest technology in new platforms. But these capabilities are for Kubernetes apps. But teams have chosen, let's go to the next slide, is to reduce the technology choice of like, let's use Kubernetes as the foundation of the compute that we're going to use to do abstractions. So the idea is to implement these capabilities with abstractions using tools that we don't expose these tools to developers for the most part, that the developers just care about building the apps or doing uh, data science, uh, like NVIDIA, right? They, don't, they want to care about uh, their projects, but not necessarily learn about Kubernetes. And I think uh, everybody was here what, when the Intuit uh, was talking about the, the developer experience. So these are some of the examples of the technologies that in the Canoe project, we have a, a small utility called the IDP Builder that allows you to create a, a, a stack uh, with different tools and put together that you have something that you can like, quickly evaluate and, and choose what are the technologies that you're going to use in your stack. So for this talk, uh, NVIDIA is going to give us a, a, a journey of a three-layer journey of like how they, have, they went from not having a platform to using this type of technology. So in their case, they'll be using like cross-plane, backstage, Argo CD, Argo workflows, to allow a fast onboarding of applications that their team are, is in charge of, and how they went from a no one onboarding to a few developers to be able to fulfill that need in, the, in NVIDIA to be able to quickly onboard apps on the cloud. And in this, in this case, it's using Kubernetes and Kubernetes APIs, everything driven through GitHub. So uh, the idea of the talk is to give you some details about the patterns that they have done and the best practices that they're done. 
So with that, I'll leave it to Feng, and I'll come back. Feng, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I was joking when I was saying I work for work. <laughs> <laughs> at Bay, at, as a Bay, you know, we actually work mostly for fun. And uh, when we're not working, uh, I reach out to Carlos, get some more lessons on, on, on uh, Kubernetes and put it into practice, you know. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to give you a little bit of a, you know, insight of what we do. Like, uh, so essentially, right, this is ArgoCon. Uh, we, uh, we are basically uh, are a uh, IT team in uh, NVIDIA. We had a lot of applications. Uh, these are touching not only internal, but also external customers, a lot of impact. Uh, if you ask me uh, what those applications do, you know, I can't give you a straight answer because we have 200 plus apps and every app is different. So there's really a big impact. But the only thing that's in common between those apps are you know, they all use the cloud, one. they all use uh, Kubernetes, and I think that's like 70 to 80% of your app today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think yeah, this, yeah, this, go ahead. Uh, just, just give me a second. <laughs> okay. So how do we help these uh, developers? You know, we, have, we really have two kind of developers, right? We have so many app in, uh, applications, so there's uh, regular enterprise developers, you know, for all kind of stuff, but we also have a lot of bot developers, right? People who are w working with to do LLM or RAG, you know, these are, these are the, uh, the, the new things we support. And uh, on top of that, we also have to support a tool. They're, they are get growing to, to be fond of using, which is called a MuleBus database. I, I don't know how many of you heard of it, but the, you know, it's basically a vectorized database then the, that the LLM uh, is, go, uh, pretty much everyone uses that. And uh, so all of these now are, work, are all running in, in our cloud, you know. Uh, the problem is uh, most of our developers just like uh, what Carlos and uh, the guy from Intuit said, they're developers, and they can't actually do uh, Kubernetes, they can't do cloud, because actually, if you don't know of them, NVIDIA won't hire you. <laughs> That's the main thing. You gotta know them to, to get hired, but they spend so much time to do that, they don't have no time to work, focus on their work. And plus, uh, from a professional point of view, you really don't want to leave those guys to work uh, on Kubernetes. Because if you do that, you know, uh, I, I would say that we have 50 ways to deploy application just in IT, right? Imagine that, and how are you going to do, uh, do security? How are you going to do monitoring in a, in a standard-wise way if you have 50 ways, you know, to do the app deployment, right? Um, so we set out by creating a, a environment, a cloud environment with the, the, the secure network but then we decided, you know, we have to come up with a way to help our developers so that their life becomes easier. And by easier, uh, we actually have a term in NVIDIA. It's called, uh, you know, we call them transforming their lives at the speed of light. And what does speed of light mean? And the first thing that comes to mind is obviously speed, right? We want our uh, developers to be able to deploy their apps in, in, instead of weeks, now to be, to be days, right? And the other thing, that is not just about uh, speed. Speed without quality is nothing. So it's about quality. That's what we described earlier, is we want to build this platform so that it will bring things together in a coherent manner. It will be much more efficient, and security will be better. You know, uh, monitoring would be better. Without them doing anything, because as an infrastructure, infrastructure team, platform team, we're coming along to the way so that we can take away some of the repetitive work so people can really focus on what they're doing and leave us to do the rest of the stuff, right? Uh, but also, we only have three to four people to do this. Uh, actually, it's a surprise to me that I came to share with Carlos. You see how unprepared I was? But that's because we started about a year ago. And we, we started with no customer, but now we have 40 apps in one year with three or five people doing this application. So this is a lot of work for us, uh, but thankfully Argo CD is there, and our friends like Carlos is there. Uh, so that's why we is able to do that, and I want to share this journey because if I think if I can do this, you can also do this. Uh, and how do we do that? You know, everything has come as uh, with a with a price uh, and with some sort of struggle. You know, if you want to do something good, right? Um, but we our goal is is clear. I already uh, described them, so I won't repeat them again. But I want to tell you that in order to get our goal, we have to choose the right tools. And I believe Argo CD is the right tool. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that was the third largest, 
But now going back, you know, there's so many people doing that. And we use Argo CD, but it's not enough, right? Argo CD will get us to, into the God, get a GitOps principle. You know, our deployment can come into a state when it's uh, all uh, based on code in day zero and day n. But we also need to be able to, be able to work with cloud components. Because you can see earlier in my slides, the, the applications are very diverse. They have different, different needs. And they need to interact not just with uh, you know, uh, Kubernetes, it also needs to work with AWS. And the problem is we only we have AWS Cloud, we have Azure Cloud, we have GCP Cloud, and how are we going to be able to handle all this cloud, right? And we can use Terraform, but if we use Terraform, we beat our purpose. We now have to manage Terraform deployed components plus Kubernetes with Argo CD. Who's going to be the master? Where is the central coherent point? For, for that, we decided we're going to bypass Terraform. We're going to use Crossplane. So Crossplane will be used under the command of Argo CD to get it done. Um, but of course, Crossplane is complicated. We probably have to do a little bit of function, do a little of software here and there. But that's besides the point. The point is Argo CD plus Crossplane plus, plus other things like you can see also a Backstage, because we're using Backstage to provide, to provide the ability to do onboarding, the UI, the cataloging, and we need to interact with Vault. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, by default, uses Vault as a standard for secret management, and that's a, that's a secret we have to stick to, because without security, there's nothing. So today, we're using external secrets, which is a, an add-on. <laughs> what we call an add-on is really just a Helm chart, right? But Argo City manages it as an, as an add-on. So with that external secret, we can get to work with Vault, uh, and then we also uh, interact with other things like Artifactory, JFrog, uh, uh, you know. And all these tools are, are, now, are now there, and we also use Datadog, for, by the way, to do, um, to do monitoring. Uh, the tools are there. Okay, so the second thing is we, we get to start to build our system. Okay, the system is going to be, you know, complicated, you know, it has to be sophisticated to handle all the applications. Uh, but the first step is to get things working. Uh, bare minimal, you have to get it working. After it gets working, you can think about how to structure it better, you know, how to complete all this whole life cycle, you know, how to optimize every component. So we, since I use the word speed of light, I will use another word from Star Wars, you know, I, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I, I'm just trying to play cool. <laughs> so I will use the word warp. Well, what warp means is you're gonna, we're going to transform ourselves from car speed to plane speed to rocket speed, and hopefully to the speed of light, which will reach next 10 years, right? But, uh, but we will do the first step is get our application deployed, and to do that, uh, we create our clusters environment into two parts. One, one is called the K0 cluster, one is the KN cluster. Uh, I know there's many ways to do this. There's more than 10 ways to skin the same cat. But for us, where our goal is to create a single coherent platform, and that makes it sense to separate the control plan and the work fleet plan. And, and therefore, we want Argo CD to run in a dedicated cluster. And that cluster will command other clusters, which are AWS, Azure, all the other different clouds. And so we call it control plan in the K0 in other clusters, KN. Um, and that also is more secure because if people happen to get a hold of the work, work, workload, they cannot get into the, the K0 cluster itself. So, uh, so we did that and we put Argo CD on the K0 and now we also build and you know, the building of them is an you know, is a, is a ongoing process. We're currently using Crossplane and Composition to do that. But with that we have, uh, the next step is get add-ons. And our choice of add-ons, you know, because uh, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, uh, choices, and uh, uh, we had a choice to, chosen based, based on our needs, right? Uh, what our application people need. <laughs> so that's probably not the same as what uh, Cloud was going to show in the end. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, that's, that's a choice that is best for our application. And I'll give an example why these add-ons are important, right? Add-ons make sh a basically ensure your cluster are set up to go to do whatever you need. Okay, for example, you want HPA. What do you choose? You want Carpenter. You know, Carpenter does that HPA for you. And a lot of our neural workloads, uh, our, our workloads are GPU based because they are uh, machine learning. So, so traditionally, you have to install a video GPU operator. Of course, you still have to do that. But the point is, I don't want to do it manually. So how do you do it automatically? Argo CD solves the problem for you because 
Argo CD sets up the Git repo. As part of the add-on, we'll have Carpenter, and we'll have like uh, 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 NVIDIA uh, sitting there, the NVIDIA operator sitting there. So once people uh, spin off their pod, they have a statement, then the, the thing called extended resource uh, tolerator, that will create the necessary uh, toleration for you, and if we create the the GPU, uh, the sorry, the the node pool with a proper tank, that's going to match. So this way, uh, we'll be able to uh, dynamically creating node pools for GPU nodes and for CPU nodes. The developer doesn't have to do anything because Argo CD makes sure that the the nodes are created dynamically, and uh, every node every node pool that's created, the GPU operator will be installed. And you know that's the whole holy uh, automated process, and that's that's like the power of uh, of add-ons. And uh, how do you install these add-ons, right? There's so many add-ons, and not every cluster needs the same set of add-ons. And fortunately, Argo CD has a powerful concept of application set. Basically, application set is just one logical entity that you set up once, but it decides by itself using a thing called cluster generator. And each cluster generator just chooses what cluster to install. Uh, so you can see here, we're only installing this cross-plane resource provider, uh, which runs on AWS. It only chooses AWS clouds, uh, clusters. And with the cluster, with, uh, with those, uh, uh, you know, the, the statement, I need a cross-plane. And this is also templated. You know, all the information can be dicked from the cluster annotation itself. And uh, so that's the, uh, you know, Argo CD tool allows to do us to do this. And uh, Carlos uh, actually initialized, uh, helped us to, <laughs> to get into the GitOps bridge that has all the initial template for doing that. And the second thing is, like, after you have add-ons, right, now you have to deploy your applications, right? Applications itself, if you do it in a plain way, it has, like, 10, 15, you know, manifest to start with, to just to set it up, and then you have to deploy your, your application. If you leave it as, as a plan, uh, manifest, that's completely unmanageable. It's not secure. You need a one entity to describe an entire project because it makes it uh, easy to manage it with one YAML file. It also many, makes the security better because now you can treat the whole project with, with one entity and then you can apply you know, policies on it, you know, uh, make sure you can control it. So that's the second step, step we did with WAP2 is we structuralized the way we deploy application. So we basically yapped, uh, sorry, uh, packaged the entire pack, uh, application definition into one YAML file. And in the YAML file, you can see here that you have a lot of uh, things like uh, uh, repo, you know, uh, many application services. And in the end, this thing, it gets deployed and you will see it from the Argo UI as a complete page. That one page has the Git repo, it has the project, and has the, the, you know, the network, pol uh, network policies, etc. Uh, cloud services related, like S3, it, it related to this is also deployed as a separate step called cloud and all the microservices. And with this kind of things, uh, people can view their projects, you know, uh, directly, just their own project, right? But they can see it as a whole entity. And they, they have read access to the uh, surrounding stuff, but they, they have complete control of their application. And we also have a, 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 a YAML file, so values.yaml, that basically provide a custom uh, value, uh, Helm chart, which is a opinionated. It defines how we do ingresses, how we do HBA, you know, uh, things like that, because a lot of our customers actually don't have a Helm chart. They just have, have a container. And this way, they don't have to do anything. They just can come and uh, put some simple values as getting deployed. And our job is really to make our uh, uh, developers' uh, life easier. That's the whole purpose. And in the end, we realize this is even we, after we did that, it's still not enough. The third step is really the most exciting step is actually to make the whole life cycle of onboarding a project <coughs> completely automated by a workflow, Argo CD workflow. We use Argo CD event or workflow and we use backstage as a UI. You can see how easy it is to onboard a project. It's just a simple page like that. Carlos is gonna show you more, but this is where the, the deployed project will look like. When workflow completes its, its steps, all the green check marks show up, show up. Then you realize it is already done, all done, and after this, you know, uh, our purpose is that we'll be able to not only deploy it, but also adding like uh, dashboard for monitoring. We'll 
enable automatic like a security scan after it is done. This can all, always be triggered from workflow. But the starting point is you have to get the project deployed, and all the information will be provided to you. Uh, and Argo CD provides a great basis for that. Um, you know, I, I'll go back to Carlos now because to set this all up takes some time, but he, he's going to show you a very fast way of doing that. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll take this one. Yeah. So let me let me show you a demo on like um, this is how Nvidia is doing it in in house. So we have an example of how this will look like if you want to try it today in your in your laptop. Um, let me exit from the. Let me sure that we have a disturb and I have a since um, these tools to set up it it takes a while. I have a recording that I did. Hopefully I can. Switch my display. How do I set up mirror? Uh, do, 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 do. Where is mirror here? I'm, I'm mirroring? You see what I see here? Oh, okay, okay. Then <laughs> I was trying to set it up. You see the the backstage there. So uh, we'll start from here. So if you go to the Canoe project, C N O E dot I O, um, in here what you can see is um, a, we have a IDP builder. That's a CLI uh, binary that you can download. Uh, it's available in uh, Mac and Linux. So if you have Windows, you'll be using the WSL2 to running Linux. And it's a little utility that you can download. You don't have to have a kind, uh, just Docker or Finch in, in your computer. In here, you can see that we have a, a GitHub repository called Stacks. So I'm going to show today the CICD example. Um, and all the links will be at the end. Um, and in the project, we have some stacks that are like, if you want to do Dapper integration, or if you want to do Kiverno integration, or if you want to do local stack or vCluster, like all these tools are the ones that, that platform teams use to build a, a stack. Um, and basically, the stack is a directory where you point the, the CLI. So in this case, I'm going to run the CLI in, in, in the terminal. And this will create a kind cluster and deploy the whole stack um, of, um, of the application. So it will deploy Backstage, Argo CD, uh, Argo Events, um, Keycloak, um, and a Git server. So the thing is, it would deploy Git T. Uh, it's a Git server that comes in here. So you don't have to set up a GitHub account or set up uh, the repos. Everything from one command will give you Backstage. So we'll show like in a similar example of NVIDIA on board applications. So in this case, I don't have an application here, but in Backstage, uh, you will have a template that the platform team would do, and you will ask the developer team, like, what is the name of the service that you want to onboard? Uh, what is the cost center, for example? Uh, do you want me to create repos? Um, where is the host name of the application? Who's going to be the owner? Uh, we can ask things of, like, where is the Docker registry? Where is the vault section or key for this application? So you're asking all these questions to create the, the YAML file that, that Feng was talking about, that this is the the, the YAML file that is going to be get deployed. You can add the environment, so if, for example, you have dev versus test, it could be different clusters. At the end, you're generating like a, like a YAML file. In this case, uh, Backstage is creating two Git repos, one for the application, one for the deploy. And at this stage, um, Argo workflow is, is running and getting executed uh, for CI and CD. So there's an Argo workflow uh, for CI that gets triggered with an event. So uh, you can see here in Backstage, the app got registered. It has links to the app report where we, we see a main.go and a CI folder. So this is Argo events and Argo workflows in charge of creating CI and building the image. The next one is the other repo, which is, as a best practice, separating the deployment. So there's a, a, an environment set, set up of dev and test, and there's a CD folder that has the Argo events with the Argo workflows embedded, that this, these two Argo workflows get triggered by a Git uh, webhook, for example. Uh, and Backstage has plugins for Argo CD and Argo workflows. So in this case, um, you can put it in the tab. So this is Argo workflow. So Backstage is connected to Argo workflows. So you can see here Argo workflows running and is building the two Argo CD apps that is going to be in charge of um, Everything is GitHub, so the CI pipelines in Argo workflows are deployed with Argo CD. 
the CD, R deploy with Argo CD. So in this case, I'm going to make a change to my main.go. Um, I'm going to change a line, right? So I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm merging directly, so I'm going to change it to Argo con. And instead of a pull request, this is a demo, I'm just going to commit, commit to uh, main. And this would trigger uh, a webhook in Git-T or Git Actions. In this case, it's Git-T. So as you can see, the green icon there is send an event to Argo events. And then Argo events has a sensor that then it will trigger the Argo workflow. So at this stage, Argo workflow is running and building the container image and pushing it to the registry. In this case, Git-T has a container registry, an OCI registry. So it's pushing to the same example. So the idea is for the platform developer to be able to quickly evaluate or test a platform. Uh, this is the Argo CD uh, plugin in Backstage that you can link the status, but also jump into the application that you're deploying. Um, so that was a quick, a quick setup. Um, I have the, the, the links to the example if you want to give it a try. But basically, that's um, what um, that I show. Let me put it here, put fruit screen. Um, that's, the, that's the one command. So the one command, what it did was build a kind cluster with backstage Argo CD, Argo workflows, Argo events, external secret operator, key cloak, NGINX, right? As a platform team, you're evaluating different, different tools, but stitching them together. So with one line command, you point to a stack, and then you actually can test this. this. And then in production, basically this, all these stacks and those, these apps are deployed with Argo apps. So these are just Argo apps being deployed. Um, the links are there, and then we want to finish with um, the benefits right, of this and the lessons learned to finish with Fang. Well, we're running out of time, so oh, sorry. Uh, I wouldn't just spend way much time to talk about the benefits you can see there, but I just want to mention that if we can do it, you can do it. We have four people, and we started one year ago. We have 40 apps, and uh, everybody's happy. So Argo can power you to do that. That's ma the main message. Yeah, give us feedback. Uh, this is the QR code to uh, the sketch to uh, rate the talk. Thank you so much. I'll be around to answer questions on the whole track.